Hey, 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 y'all. What's up, John Browner, Jason Lawhead here on the Browner and Lawhead show right here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN. As usual, we are in your car on the Mightier 1090. We are in your phone via YouTube, via podcast. And if you follow us through that thing, like, share, and subscribe to the show. It is us. It is it is Tuesday. We go Monday through Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m., bringing you guys all the fun in sports, as we always say. By the time you get to us, you know the news. We are having fun with the facts. And that's what we do here. What's up, Jason? What up, Brown, brown Man? How you doing, buddy? Living, enjoying, you know, one day at a time. One of these, one of these uh, uh, fun-filled shows at a time. And when we get to this point in the year, like, we love football so much on this show. Football really kind of gives us a lot of content that you already know, which helps the show. But when football ends, we kind of dig. And actually, if we're being honest, after football season, it's kind of where I have more fun with the show because we get to go to a wider range of things because football is so over-consuming. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't really intake basketball till it's either Final Four time or, or bracket time, which we had a great time with last year on the show. We've got to figure out a better way to do that so we can follow our picks. And NBA Finals. But in between that, like, there's not really a lot of fun to be had. And so you get to do more content. You get to kind of explore the land, so to speak. On today's show, we're going to talk about some some chatter we're starting to hear about Mahomes. We're going to talk about what the Pro Bowl has become. And then we're going to talk about uh, the time Jason and the crew and myself and Alex and, and Scott and Bernard Thompson. We all went down to the Lakers game and... uh drank uh hmm. but before we do any of that we live in such a right now right now right now society everybody wants it now the greatest thing you're seeing has to be the greatest thing that's ever happened regardless of what happened before the thing you're seeing <laughs> so like true when the season started people were saying josh allen was the best quarterback in the nfl here we are uh two weeks out of, from the Super Bowl and no one's even talking about Josh Allen. So I always caution people, don't put the cart before the horse when it comes to these conversations. But someone is piercing that bubble. Somebody is earning their way into that conversation and it's this Patrick Mahomes. A lot of people hate it when you kind of do these uh, 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 greatest conversations because they, oh, it's so first takey, blah, 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 blah. This guy's earned it. This isn't manufactured. Like, if I told you a player, quarterback in name, took their team to five straight NFC championship games at home, which mean, which would then mean they had a great regular season. They were the best team in the AFC for the last five years running. And that person's name was not Tom Brady. What would you be saying about that person? Right. Like, how would you be lauding that person? What would be said about that person? And what if I told you the first five years of that person's career was those first five games in the AFC Championship? Like, what we're seeing from a team success portion, and actually an individual success portion, because I think he's going to win the MVP again this year. We have seen someone do something like we've never seen before. Jason, are, are... if, 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 if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. Is what my uncle would used to say. Rest <laughs> in peace. <clears throat> if Patrick Mahomes completes this season with a Super Bowl, another Larry, uh, an, I almost said Larry O'Brien, another Lombardi trophy. Do you, do you start talking about him as the greatest quarterback ever? Yeah, I think we, we just part, we barely touched on it a little yesterday when we reviewed the game. Yeah. And I think that right now, uh, with, the uh, with the season that they went through and the playoffs that they went, the AFC was really tough, really balanced this year, really tough. Even the Jacksonville Jaguars, by the time the playoffs rolled around was a good team clicking on a lot of cylinders with a future stud quarterback and a great coach who already has a Super Bowl ring that won one with a backup. Um, And, you know, basically kind of his construct of the team that he put together in Philly is in the Super Bowl and and playing Patrick Mahomes. So I think, yeah, against this team, the way 
Philadelphia has played its two NFC games. A lot of people said, ah, well, the Giants, they didn't blow. Well, the Giants were playing good football all coming off of Minnesota. And then they thought, well, well, the 49ers are going to stack up really well against them and things didn't go the 49ers way, but they still handled them and looked like Mm -hmm. the better team for sure on the field. So if Patrick Mahomes can go into this Super Bowl after five straight AFC championship appearances, um, three three of those being Super Bowl berths, uh, you, you'd sit there and you'd go, he beat he beat at a historic defense. Whether Philadelphia wins this thing or not, you can't deny that this defense has been historic. Three guys in double-digit Correct. sacks, that's never happened before. Um, you know, the teams that they've been able to kind of just – clean the clocks of throughout the season and as consistent as they've been you know with Jalen Hurts now 19 and 2 in his last 21 starts um yeah I I I don't see how you can't and people will say they'll be the what if they'll be the argument second Super Bowl ring let's wait and see and I get that the er eras are different times are different um he's been blessed with Andy Reid no doubt as much as you know either Brady was blessed with Belichick or the other way around and and Walsh was blessed with Montana or the other way around however you want to see that you know obviously the quarterback and coach relationship is very very important to have that kind of ultimate success at the ultimate level and then to keep that success going you know it's one thing to to do it to get there to get on top but staying on top in anything whether it's sports entertainment whatever it is in your field right it's it's very hard to stay on top once you've gotten on top because that hunger sometimes isn't there where it was initially. So, yeah, I think that Patrick Mahomes, what he did the other night against a really good Cincinnati Bengals football team that would that had a great game plan to win that game, maybe even still the better team. When you really look at it, uh, uh, X's and O's wise and, um, you know, depth and all that kind of stuff and where the Bengals are going, he was able to kind of will that team um, to not lose that football game as it was maybe feeling like it was slipping away a little uh, as the game progressed. Um, he he just kept them right there and then obviously finished the job um, on one leg with guys going down. I think it's uh, I think it's easy to say he's definitely with a win here is definitely in the list of those other two names I just mentioned and that's Brady and Montana and I think the list would stop there. Um, with all the who's better, what era, all that jazz, there's no doubt. I mean, he's going to go down, I think, you know, not just whatever happens this year. I mean, they'll be back. I mean, they keep – teams keep coming for him in that division. They Correct. Still, teams keep trying to build and come for him in that division. And the consistency that they maintain, losing guys like Tariq Hill, you know, um, having to kind of fit other guys in, maybe some veterans that other teams kind of gave up on, no doubt. No doubt he's on the short, short list if he wins this game and um, he positions himself in the next few years. He's a young guy. He's so young. Dude. don't realize how young he is. I mean, he positions himself to maybe eventually put some of these guys in his rearview mirror if it eventually goes that way. These are the Super Bowls Tom Brady's won. I want to be very clear. These... (laughs) I think people forget, and this is where in football, the quarterback getting so much credit really sometimes bothers me about the argument of who the greatest football player is ever. The Patriots, uh, the, the Super Bowl wins that Tom Brady has, 20 to 17 against the Rams. Remember, the Rams got stopped on the goal line. I think it was Isaac Bruce got mm-hmm. stopped, what, less than a yard mm-hmm. from the goal line from winning the Super Bowl. They beat the pan the Cam Newton Panthers. No, with the a, uh, Jake Delone Panthers. J- yeah, you're correct. I'm sorry. The Jake Delone Panthers, 32-29. I think that was a field goal. I, th- I think that was a venetary field goal, it if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yeah, that was the difference. They beat the Eagles 24-21. Notice this pattern. They beat the Seahawks on the Russell Wilson goal line interception when they should have just handed it off to Marshawn Lynch. They were down to the Falcons 28 to 3 or 28 to 3, famously, legendarily. Oh. The only Super Bowl, and again, he gets he gets the credit because he did win them, that he literally just took care of business was ironically Bucks Chiefs when it was 31 to 9. So, 
it, right, it but his awesome. last two Super Bowl wins were really he could have just kind of won those games. They, those were very, you know, could have been very Peyton Manning Denver type wins because they beat the Rams 13 to 3. Mm-hmm. They beat the, the Chiefs only scored nine points. So, I mean, his last two Super Bowl wins, the, the, the opponent only scored 12 points total. Uh, those were great defensive performances by yes. by both of those teams. And I'm not knocking Tom Brady. I, I know you're not knocking not. Tom no, Brady. I no. mean, but um, yeah, there's some lines to read through some of that. When you look at actually, when you look at Tom Brady's body of work in Super Bowls, even the games he won, not great. Well, doesn't even compare it to Montana's quarterback rating, Montana's stats, Montana's touchdowns versus turnovers. It doesn't even come close. I mean, if you really want to break down Super Bowls and the and the, the performances therein, you know, uh, we're looking up at Joe Montana when you look at quarterback rating, when you look at touchdowns versus turnovers, rushing yards even from Montana, sneaky rushing yards he has in some of those games. And um, you know, he won the first Steve two Young as well. Steve Young has that one, but you know, Montana people that oh yeah, Jerry Rice. Not for the first two he didn't. Montana won the first two Super Jerry Rice only won two Super Bowls with Montana. He won three all together with, 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 when you add in Steve Young. So, you know, Brady didn't bring home the, the, the ring with Randy Moss. So, Correct. I, you know, there's, there's lines to read through all that. And I, and I say that because when, you, when Patrick Mahomes wins, it's 35 to, to something. It's 28-42. He's put the work in for them to win. I don't think he's ever had the luxury of having a defensive performance carry him to the point where all I need to do now is get them. I'm talking about in the Super Bowl, get them down and we win a, and we make a field goal. We win. The defense has never had a bunch of turnovers for Patrick Mahomes to be successful. He's had to be an offensive juggernaut in these playoff games, or the team loses. And I think once he wins another one that'll take him to two in five years. He's going to be talked about in a sense of look at what he did in the Super Bowls. Look at the numbers he put up in the Super Bowls. And if we're going to start comparing him to Tom Brady, it, it, it gets you in the same conversation as Michael Jordan and LeBron James. I don't think Michael Jordan, I don't think LeBron James will ever win as many titles as Michael Jordan. But statistically, he's eclipsed him. And that's not, that, that's not a debate. Like LeBron's played way more games and way more minutes than Michael Jordan. To me, Michael Jordan is the greatest player ever because of the way that he won. People are going to start taking the route that Patrick Mahomes is better because statistically, I think he's going to be better. Will he win more Super Bowls? I'm not sure. Seven's a lot of Super Bowls. Seven's a lot. (laughs) That's a lot of anything. Seven is a lot. Seven's a lot of tournaments to win for a golfer. I mean, that's to have seven majors is like ridiculous. Most golfers don't. Like maybe, I don't listen, you know. I don't know what seven isn't a lot of in anything. You choose. You pick the thing. Seven cats, too many. Seven cars, too many. Seven houses, too seven many. Seven kids. I'm the youngest. Way too many. <laughs> seven is <laughs> too many. Too many. Tom Brady's got as many rings as your seven. parents have kids. Right there, too seven. many. <laughs> too damn many. So that number <laughs> seems comical. It's it's laughable because if you really having seven hats. Seven jerseys, too many, too damn many. And I think so four I, is that benchmark number. You know, I think you yeah, know what I think. What, I think, what I think Brady it's five? I think it's five. Well, Montana. I think okay. Well, for, Montana's got four. The, the Niners have five. When you add Young, and I but think he has to get past Montana. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. Well, I still think today, in with the parody in the NFL, is True. much deeper than it was then. There was the NFL's always done a good job of parody, kind of since the '70s dynasties and the '80s, and you know, and they started kind of really working on on parody, and it's kind of been that way for a long time. But uh, I think it's you know, obviously it's even more the parody is even more deeper and 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 spread out than it's ever been. So. You know, four is that number almost, and I feel like four is kind of that number in a lot of the sports, especially the ones when we graded NBA championships. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Magic has five. LeBron has four. Uh, Steph's got four? Four, Three. yeah. Four. Four, no. Um, four. So, you know, uh, Michael's got six. Uh, you know, so you kind of – that's kind of where that, like, at four mm-hmm. – at four championships – 
then you start looking into the numbers and usually that's when you can start going okay so he won six or seven or whatever and this guy won four but look at the numbers look at the you know <laughs> wins and losses as a starter over the course of a career right like so that's where i think it really starts you know getting to the point where you can kind of you know, I kind of feel like Patrick Mahomes is at that Steph Curry level right now mm -hmm. with a chance to be LeBron or Jordan-esque with yes. more of them on the mantle as they come. So we have had a seismic shift in something that no one's paid attention to in forever in an attempt to get your attention. Now, as great as the game of football is in America, the Pro Bowl, no one cares. Mm-mm. Now, on from a, and, and here's how crazy we watch football in this country. The Pro Bowl gets the lowest rating of any program that the NFL offers. It is still one of the highest rated things watched during the year on live television. That's how maddening the, the whole thing is. But the NFL noticed that this was not a good product. Guys were getting hurt. It was too much of a risk. No one wanted to play in it. So they right. stopped having guys go to Hawaii. I think Vegas will now be the landing spot for it. The upside to this now is there will be no more game, but there's going to be a ton of competitions, which for me, I've read some of them. There's dodgeball. There's a bunch of uh, 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 course competitions. There's a tic-tac-toe with kickers and long snappers. There's obviously accuracy with three quarterbacks, which then leads me to <laughs> Tyler Hundley. <laughs> Tyler Hundley has been selected as a Pro Bowl alternate. So he's going to the game. Tyler Hundley, some of you may not even know who he is, which it makes it even worse. It's a quarterback. Some Ravens, Ravens, some Ravens fans don't know who he is. Correct. <laughs> there's, there's some people, there's some people, people in, in Baltimore office. that don't know who right. he is. There are some people in the front office like, uh, there's a Mr. Tyler Hundley here, says he's <laughs> on the team. <laughs> We're still paying a Tyler Huntley, yeah, because he's on the Who, team. Oh, oh, okay. Right, right. I, thought was, I thought he was head of security. Whose nephew is Tyler Huntley? <laughs> exactly. He's a quarterback. Oh, he's a quarterback. Oh, okay. Well, all right. There is going to be a reckoning with this because now you don't have to keep naming a third guy. So Patrick Mahomes is obviously in the Super Bowl, so he's out. Joe Burrow, I don't know if he'll attend. Josh Allen hurt. Justin Herbert hurt. To a concussion still, by the way. So there mm -hmm. you go for people who like, oh, he should have played in the playoff game. Out. Um, I'm tre <laughs> Trevor Lawrence is going, right? Trevor Lawrence is going. Uh, um, Ru Russell Wilson would have been an easy pick, but somehow his team has sucked so bad. And that's they, put a, they put a guy in the game with two touchdowns and three interceptions. If you ever need an example of how bad Russell Wilson was this season, he didn't make the Pro Bowl, and a guy who had two touchdowns and three interceptions did. So did, <laughs> and who fumbled at the goal line of a playoff game that would have advanced him into the next round. <laughs> literally, <laughs> you know, I mean, literally, it was the deciding factor on why right. they didn't move on to the next round. So, I'm sorry if I think this is a la this is a joke. This is bad for the NFL. This is. If I made I'm, a joke earlier where I said, uh, even Scott Rowland is going, seriously, Tyler Huntley? <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 really, it really puts me in, a, in, a, you know, in an odd place, man, because it's good for him. It's great for him. It's on his resume. But when he goes to negotiate his, con his next contract with the team, what's he going to say? Mm -hmm. Hey, his agent's going to go, hey, man, my guy was a pro bowler. My guy was a pro bowler. And any team literally was, yeah, you should pay us for that pro bowl. You should pay us three picks, two touchdowns. Get this out of here. Right. No, like, and he'll always have the moment. He'll always have the accolade. He'll always have the Twitter posts. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. What are we doing? He'll have that in his history of, you know, when you go to the sportsreference.com, he'll always have that little star for the year on that year he played, that little star next to his year and name and, and, and the season he had. You know, you know, you've done something interesting, not necessarily great, but interesting as an athlete when you can become a trivia question. When they go, right. who is the who is the only quarterback to have made the Pro Bowl with more interceptions than touchdowns? It's gonna be him mm -hmm. forever now, forever. They can't do this again.
There's probably like wide receivers out there that have thrown more such, you know, like a pitch out to Javaris Landry where he throws right. it. For, there's, there's probably a couple. Yeah, exactly. There's probably a couple of skilled position players out there with more touchdown throws. Saquon Barkley. Yeah, guys like that, right? Like, if at this point, just take somebody from the NFC, man. It, like, this is bad. This is bad. Jacoby yeah. Brissett had what? What was Jacoby Brissett? Jacoby Matt Ryan. Brissett. Well, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, Jacoby Brissett had 2,600 yards passing, 12 touchdowns this year. I mean, yeah, he was taken out of the – he was only taken out of the job because Watson came off the suspension. He played right. really well. The, the Browns weren't losing games because of Jacoby Brissett. They were right. losing games because they couldn't stop the run, and their head coach who had his head up his rear end and special teams stunk, and they got penalties, and they lost close games. Like, Jacoby Brissett kept them in a position to win a lot of football games. Throw a guy like remember, that that's had a long career and give him a gift for his life. Remember the NBA? We're going to tell you about it when we come back. Brown and Law here on the Mighty 1090 ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Brown and Law head here on the Mighty 1090 ESPN, keeping you guys updated on all the post, I don't know, football things. They, there's so much coming on the forefront. We have so much basketball coming. The Padres have got everybody fired up here in Southern California and San Diego, to be more specific. So we're going to be covering that wall-to-wall -wall when that starts. The Colorado Rockies owner made some very interesting comments about the Padres. We'll find some time to get into that. So, I mean, when your first name's Dick, you should probably not <laughs> insult people. But anyway, uh, if you're just joining us, we are Brown and Lawhead. I'm John Browner. That's Jason Lawhead. You can hear him. You can hear me. You can see uh, both of us on YouTube at Kaplan and Crew. We're Brown and Lawhead. Or you can hear us via iTunes podcast store under the same moniker, like, share, and subscribe. On the show previously, before you guys showed up, we were talking about how Patrick Mahomes may be able to pop that goat bubble soon if he wins the Lombardi in, in a couple of weeks. And we also made fun of Todd Hunley. I always come Todd Hunley. Uh, Tyler Hundley and his and his election to the Pro Bowl with his whopping two touchdowns and three picks. Uh, I told you we would talk about the Lakers and the NBA when we returned because Jason and I, along with Alice Padilla, took a pilgrimage to Crypto.Staple.LA <laughs> Live, whatever the hell it's called now. And we sat in a suite. That was sweet. Turned it. Courtesy of ESPN, uh, where Scott works in L ESPN LA, they treated us to a – I mean, they're not going to hire us. They treated us <laughs> to a suite because they were playing the Spurs. Now, the reason we got this suite – funny backstory. They're playing the Spurs. The Spurs are purposely tanking for Win Binyama. No one wanted to go to this game, so we got the tickets. We got the suite. Lo and behold, two days before the game is actually supposed to happen, Anthony Davis now available. They trade for Rui Hachimura. And their first game was going to be this game. So the building was sold out. It was a great energy. The Spurs actually played well. They AD, did for three and a half quarters. They did. Right. AD sprains his ankle at halftime, which, you know, you're not at a Laker game until AD gets hurt. LeBron was fantastic, but disengaged for the first half. And Rui really, Hachimori made some good plays, had the crowd energized, and we had a great time. Uh, the sweet, the drinks, thank you very much. Yeah. I could do that a lot. I mean, I've I worked at seven ten, and thanks to seven ten and shout out, yeah, Thank Sam you. Sam Pines, uh, the uh, the the owner of the station showed up, and he was gracious, and all the guys that worked there that came by and uh, let us just have rough shot of the place, right? Open bar, right. food, everything, man, and you know, you and I had the luxury of not having to get behind the wheel to get up there. So I was <laughs> like, back. okay, I'll take a few beers here. And then I finished with some Jameson on the rocks. And there was the dessert cart. Boy, oh, man. The dessert cart. After all the great food that was in there, around halftime, third quarter, they roll that dessert cart by. Oh, man. And by the way, the dessert cart's unlimited. It's, it's just unlimited. there for you to take whatever you want off of it. You could create like just whatever you want. You got like, I want two slices of that with a brownie, throw four scoops of ice cream, sprinkles, hot fudge sauce, gummy bears. I mean, you could do anything you want there. Is it, you know, <laughs> when we were in the midst of all that, I said to myself, is this how other people live? Is this what it's like? Wait a minute. I could get a bag of gummy bears whenever I want. What am I yeah, you doing? just took a whole bag home, didn't you? You like, yeah. yeah, so yeah, 
I'm thinking like, oh, they got these bags. You take a couple out, whatever. No, fam. You mm -hmm. take the bag, and it's bag. a healthy bag. It's, it's a nice it's, bag. It has like it's like a it's like a bag of money bag. Right, right, dude. It's not it's not like a it's like a crown royal bag. If, if, right, yeah. Okay? It's a crown royal bag of gummy bears. It just you know, and they had uh, gummy bears. They had those like little orange circle things. I don't know what okay. those are called, but uh, they, they had, had like, drawers. They had drawers in there that we didn't even look into. Like they had the, they had the ice, ice cream. cream drawer, but then they had other drawers. I was like, what are you know? And then they had back because that some of the other drawers are just the backup cakes because you know they've got like the red velvet <laughs> cakes already been cut into, the chocolate cakes been cut into, the vanilla cakes been cut into, the rainbow cakes been cut into. I mean, Listen, they, they, had, they had a backup cake. Okay, cake, cake, yeah. So it again. Shout out to Scott. For, uh, Scott Kaplan, obviously, for uh, turning the wheels on that thing. It was just a fantastic experience, man, and I, I would love to do it again. I don't know if, when they get to play the Spurs again, but I'm in. They've got that from what I was talking to those guys. You know, that's every game. Their, every, not just every game. Clippers, Lakers, Kings, concerts. I mm -hmm. mean, that's like basically – a second home like like you could use that as like like i would be airbnb in that thing to people <laughs> you know I mean? like, just it's incredible oh. like they and i was like why when are, we, when are we going to a hockey game when are we going to a concert when's mccarthy Dude. coming when you know like you could they got they got that thing for the ice capades like anything like disney on ice like they've got it for anything that enters that building That's you know crazy. i i always thought purchasing a suite was too expensive and dumb until I learned what you get in it. Mm. It is worth the money, by the way. If I were a successful, let's say you and I became successful comedians. Well, me, you already a successful comedian. Well, let's, say that two. let's became, we became successful enough to have a suite at the, yes. At the yes. Staples Center. If we were two LA producers slash comedians slash writers, right? I would I would literally say to you, hey man, let's let's figure out how to do this. Yeah. Let's because the relationships you could build alone by having the accessibility of everything that happens in that building in the suite, it would pay for itself, man. And so listen, I've now changed the life goal. That's not one of my right. goals in life. It I'm dead serious. That's not one of my goals in life is to have a suite at one of these arenas, man. Cause I love basketball, 100%. That's, that's well known. And for a mm -hmm. city with two teams in it, they're right. playing the same building, and you can get that sweet. Whew. Guess what else comes there? You know, NCAA regional sites. Yes. Um, you know, maybe a Final Four. Uh, you yes. Know, not, not to mention that you have the Lakers. Yeah, you have 41 home games with the Lakers, 41 home games with the Clippers, and the way the Clippers have, a, you know, under Steve Ballmer, have, have changed the culture. You've got mm -hmm. two perennial playoff teams, possibly teams going deep in runs in, in the future. You've got teams, you know, the Ooh. L.A. Kings. I mean, you know, you've got so many things to entertain and so much fun. And those are great. Like, they're not at center court, but – I like that angle because I like being close to at least one of the baskets during the half because you got that kind of like that corner angle at the end of the bench is where that thing is. And I absolutely love – I and I all, always love when I'm in an NFL game or an NBA game, I want to be a little higher up. Not in the nosebleeds, obviously. Correct. But I like to have a perch. I like to be able to see – the whole court, the whole field, the whole thing develop. Sometimes being too close, far down, whether it's baseball, football, you can only kind of see like a line of scrimmage type of thing, or just like mm -hmm. a, a little angle at third base, but by the pitcher and the catcher, and you can't really. You got to like twist your head to go out. I like to be up a little bit. That's why Bill Hagen's seats are great at, at mm -hmm. uh, Petco because you kind of be. Oh, I can see everything, right? At, and, at some at some point, I honestly believe an NBA owner. Is gonna be be hit the genius level and put the suites on the floor. Seattle has some at their stadium. I think it's called the, the Link. I think it's called mm -hmm. now. Um, I think the Dallas Cowboys have some on the floor of their stadium. I know Vegas has a night. Vegas club. has a cool like yeah yes. nightclub situation. Then they get, I think on the opposite end zone they do have like sweet boxes on the opposite end zone as well. If you if if you're an owner and you put a and you put one side of the court sweet boxes. The amount of money that you oh. could charge for those things. Oh my. 
Oh my, now I know logistically taking it up for different events is, is going to be a problem. But and I know I, I understand they are where they are for a reason. But man, listen, I, that, that's now become one of those uh, goals of mine is to check, is to get one of those boxes. And the nice thing about when we went there, right? We got there early. Right. Yeah. And it went, and we got there basically like I don't I don't know when they opened the arena, but we got there to the point where we were there about an hour before tip off in Pretty our much, sleep. Yeah. And Pretty that's much. not fun to do if you're just got regular seats because you got to pay like you got to wait for the game and things cost money. If you're just in a regular seat an hour before tip off is like, oh, gosh, man, if I want to go get some food or beer, like it's going to cost me. And then I'm still an hour from tip. You got to sit there a month. But I didn't want that game to start. The best like, part like I did not want that game one of the to start. One of, one of the best parts about that entire situation is that we could have go, we got there almost pretty much an hour early. So yeah. you can leave your house early, beat the traffic, yep. get a meal in you, get a drink in you, have a good conversation with the people you came with, have the game happen. So now you don't have to talk through the game because of business or whatever. Have time come. Do some more talking, do some yep. more eating, enjoy saying it. I don't know if you own a suite, why you wouldn't get there an hour early. I, You're a moron. And then, even when you get there an hour early, and even if people are coming in early, to you go to a separate entrance, which is like TSA preferred, right? You don't, yeah. you, know, you literally just go through. It's like a, you throw, you're, there's no line, there's no way. You can you, even you, take a purse if you're a man. You took your purse. That's what I'm saying. Got in too. Wasn't clear. Wasn't see through, and it had a knife in it, which I never. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Hilarious. I didn't say that. I I forgot I had two knives in there, and wow. I was wondering Did like really? what the is. It? Yeah, I forgot. Oh wow. I, I'm always carrying stuff. In this. I was. <laughs> I, it never dawned on me like why is he giving my bag such trouble? And then it dawned on me I had two knives in there, and I never thought about it. Oh and I'm wow. like that's why. That's why he was like, hey man, what's going on with this? But you know, whatever. Oh I got wow! Through. I got through, and it literally never dawned on me. By the way, until like the other day. So yeah, shout out, shout out for uh, them not judging a black man by his weapons. Oh, we got some breaking news. I mean, oh, it'll breaking. be, it'll be, it's breaking now as we record this. But I'm looking right now, and it looks like the Saints and the Broncos are finally finalizing a deal to send Sean Payton to the Broncos as head coach. No. Oh, okay. Adam well, Schefter not... is pr is reporting as of three and a half minutes ago. Let Let's talk about this because I watch. I I take a lot. Of, I watch a lot of Colin Cowherd, and one of his major points was that because Sean Payton goes on that show for thirty minutes once a week, he kept saying Sean Payton should take this job. Sean Payton should take this job. Sean Payton's not interested in this job. That's a bad job, and I'm. Like, and here's why: they have no picks, they mm -hmm. have no cap flexibility. They have a decent defense, but you are also stuck with whether or not Russell Wilson is washed. And you won't know that until you get in there and check under the hood. And by the time you get under there and check under the hood, it'll be too late. Now, this amount of money that they're paying Sean Payton is probably going to be astronomical. Not to mention now you have to give up picks that you are already bearing the cupboard for to get a guy who at the end of his run in, in New Orleans wasn't great. And by the way, before, Early Drew Brees wasn't great either. A lot of wins didn't come out of the Sean Payton camp. So for the Broncos to probably have to break the bank to get him, trade a draft pick to get him as well. I mean, these are the Walmart people, so their money is like, you, right. you know, sell, sell some more TVs. It'll take care of the signing bonus. But I, I just, I don't know, man. That Walmart I, this, money has brought them in. This, this, I mean, give them a couple of Walmarts. You give him a couple of Walmarts, he'll be all right. You know, you make a good point. And yes, he had a lot of success wins, losses wise, with one of the most, you know, gaudy uh, offensive quarterbacks in history. Ever. I mean, ever. You know, when you look at uh, Drew when you Brees. look at Brees's numbers, I mean, those are is just incredible. But you know, this guy probably the greatest thing he ever did was call for that onside kick to start the second half in that Super Bowl and surprise everybody. He kind of just kind of swiped that win away from the Colts um, on that onside kick. I mean, that onside kick was the major difference of that Super Bowl win. I mean, if it doesn't, if they don't recover that onside kick, they probably lose that Super Bowl, and you, they never went to another one. Right. Right, pretty much. And now you got a Walt Russell Wilson, as you said, that's on the back nine of his career. He's actually probably on like 
he looks like he's on the in the water on 15 uh you know taking a penalty stroke he's a kind of he feels like he's you know on the back nine of a of a of a of a round that has just gone sideways so i mean no picks nothing really other to speak of uh, uh, there's already guys saying there's already college players saying they don't want to go there <laughs> right right <clears throat> so i did i think you just you're going to put yourself in a position with this organization where you are going to be behind the eight ball not just this year but for multiple years and if i'm the, if i'm the denver broncos i'm bringing in sean payton because this better hit immediately I don't want to. I don't want to hear you tell me anything about installing offense. I don't want to hear you tell me anything about. Uh, uh, oh, I, oh, we need another quarterback because he doesn't play my style. I don't want to hear any of that because you knew that going in. You know what Russell Wilson is. He is not. He is not Drew Brees. He's mm -hmm. not Aaron Rodgers. And those two guys are more like each other than they are than Russell Wilson are like them. And that is who they just had in the thing. You hack it. They were trying to get Russell Wilson throwing on a time based offense that's not who he is and it showed because the second packet was gone Russell Wilson looked a little better but not great so I don't know man I don't I don't this hire this hire reeks to me of desperation from Sean Payton knowing his name was hot this cycle around and he had a, a big fish on the hook and he cashed it in because that's exactly what he did yeah yeah he suckered these fools in for probably a, at the length of the contract, probably around fifty million dollars. And now, and, he's I got the, and I don't even know what the deal is, but I guarantee you, it'll be around forty to fifty million total. Yeah, I, I didn't have a report on the actual numbers. They, um, the, they're, just, they're just finalizing compensation in return. So it looks like it's he's. It looks like that all the Saints are going to get is a big fat check. I mean, they, there's not really any attractive picks to go get. Maybe they'll get some middle rounders where they can go maybe steal a good offensive lineman or some, you know, some secondary guys where you can get them in the fifth or sixth round or fourth, fifth, sixth rounders. I I, I don't know. It's a very kind of new, fresh uh, breaking news, but it's got to be ridiculous money. And Oh, he, oh my God. Yes. Yes. And he goes yes. in with the pressure of, you know, being the second best coach in that division now, and you better get results quick because, uh, you know, you know, uh, Basaccia was able to outcoach Brandon Staley the year before. Okay. Right. So you better go in there. Now you got Mc, you know, Josh McDaniel in his second year in, in, in Vegas, and maybe they get their hands on <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. I mean, maybe they get their hands on Tom Brady. I mean, you, so, you know, like you said, it's is it win the division now? No, probably not because there's the Chiefs. But is it turn it around immediately? Yes. That kind of mm -hmm. pressure is there now. I, I, with a guy like Russell Wilson and all the money they've got tied up, and the fact that, you know, Sean Payton is, is who he is. And then there's Brandon Staley and there's Josh McDaniel and the other two cities in that division. Yeah, it's turning it around now. And you better be competing to knock San Diego off the block for second place. San Diego, Los Angeles, whatever their go. names are. There you go. Hey, uh, that's just what it comes down to to me. That's literally what it comes down to to me. You're fighting for third place already. In a four-team division, and you better get it for third place. You better get it for what they're going to be paying him. You better get. You didn't it. fire I, a guy and then hire you to go finish fourth again. I because this is this is what the carousel of coaching has literally allowed me to just blast people. Coaching is becoming like quarterbacking. Next man up gets the check, and if the the word around the street is. Sean Payton is looking for 15 to 20 million. Jim Harbaugh is looking for 12 to 15 million to leave college. Look at what you're going to be getting as an NFL owner. What is your return of investment of giving a coach 15, 10, 15 to 20 million dollars? Because look where it's got Bill Belichick. You don't think Robert Kraft is looking at that check at the end of every year going, you know, I love Bill, but I've already paid him for the Super Bowls. Right. And, he, and he's losing a step. Like right. if, if 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 I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers, I love Mike Tomlin, but I'm looking at this and going, this is a lot of money for eight and eight, my man. Like we love you. You're a great man. You're a great football coach. You never had a losing season. We giving you time. How much time do we need to give you? It, 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 every team 
who has these runs of coaches. These coaches are well compensated, as they should be. But the results, the results seem to be falling short on these overly paid coaches. Look at the new contract that Sean McVay got. Look at their record this year. Stan Kroenke's got to be looking at that like, hey, we can't have too many more of these. I'll give you one. Hell, I might give you two. But we got to clean this up because you ain't cheap. And cheap things shouldn't be this bad. Yeah, I mean, he's going to – now, Russell Wilson's seven years older than Patrick Mahomes. He's 10 years older than Justin Herbert. I mean, it, I love Tomlin. I'd say stick with Tomlin. I, I get where you go with Belichick down the road. We won our Super Bowls. You, you, you know, you look at Tomlin and you sit there and go, I mean, Tomlin's done way more without with Big that. Ben of course. Than, yes. than Belichick has done without Tom Brady. Even the year Big Ben missed a whole season, they still went nine and six with Mason Rudolph as a starting quarterback. This year they go nine and eight with a guy nobody wanted in Kenny Pickett. Everybody stayed away from him, going, ah, he's too, his hands are too small. He came out of pit. I don't know. And they thought and Mr. Trubisky started the year as and Mr. Trubisky started the year. So and he had to come back in a little bit when mm -hmm. when Pickett got hurt. So you know, I, I I'll I'll pay Tomlin because I'm I, my if I'm Pittsburgh, that's our thing. Three head okay. coaches in the last 55 years. but yeah. And three good head coaches, too, by the way. I'm not saying Tomlin isn't a good coach. I love Mike But I Tomlin. know what you mean. I get what you're saying yes. when it comes to that money. And over time, you sit there and go, well, at some point, uh, we can only pay so much for so whatever we're getting. Correct. So, yeah, man. You know, that's great breaking news. Yeah. That, that, that's great breaking. I mean, unless it's a, I, unless it's you know erroneous, uh, Schefter, unless he spoke too soon, like he did about Brady's retirement. I mean, you pretty much take that as a grain. It's all other. It looks like other um, people are breaking in now. Other sources are kind of following suit and are competent in saying that this is that that Peyton is on his way to Denver to be announced. And we are on our way out, but we'll Peace. be back tomorrow. Brown and Lawhead. Peace.